everybody welcome back to my channel how are you doing i hope you're doing very well i don't really um have any life updates for you actually that's something i do want to comment on over here on this channel if you are new we do life catch-ups with each other because me and you we're like this we're tight like we're best friends, I want a gossip over FaceTime, do you know what I mean? I want to know your childhood trauma, I want to know why your mother abandoned you, that kind of stuff, do you know what I mean? So if you don't like listening to an intro like that, that's perfectly fine, but like you can skip it, um, just because I had a comment being like, why is this intro so long? Girl, I'm letting the girls know the gossip, the tea, the everything about my life, like I am going to tell you my childhood trauma step by step it's gonna be great it's gonna be great anyways that being said i actually don't have anything to update you on <laughs> nothing new since the last time i feel like i had a really full on june like it was my birthday i went to era's tour it was a lot it was a lot um so now july is a lot calmer i'm very deep in my love era that's the only thing that's still going on but um, apart from that, I'm boring. I'm a 21 year old girl, like I'm just a girl. So for today's video, we are gonna be talking about kind of the missed opportunity or the missed storyline with Hannah. This storyline, I feel like for me was hinted at so many times and there was a period in the show where this storyline did kind of happen, but Pretty Little Liars has the consistency to kind of drop storylines quite quickly and this was kind of the period of the show where things were happening and like I said they get dropped super super quick like Spencer's addiction and we're going to be talking about Hannah's identity crisis and things like that I feel like were very interesting storylines I would have liked to explore more about and I feel like they touched on them but I feel like we could have done a bit more regarding it all if that makes sense this storyline is kind of the whole thing about hannah and allison kind of looking alike and hannah kind of ba not basing her looks on allison but there was kind of that hint towards that whole thing happening and i feel like this would this was an interesting storyline and there would be things said across the series that kind of bring this up and they're like yeah we're finally gonna explore it how fun but then they explore it but they kind of don't really explore it and i'm like oh we could do so much more here guys come on i will say at this point hannah is my favorite liar just because i think i have more in common with hannah and kind of her life growing up and kind of the issues she has i think for me I just like relate to more out of the liars so hannah quickly became um one of my probably yeah my favorite liar out of all of them to be honest and i really liked them exploring hannah's character outside of kind of a and what was going on there i really liked her friendships that she had that weren't the liars um even though the friendships were quite very not good um i really enjoyed exploring the whole friendships with lucas and mona and things like that um but this storyline kind of focused on allison and kind of i think the trauma that allison left hannah as well um so i think they could have dived deeper in that i've made some notes so we're gonna read we're gonna make our way through kind of my thought process on this whole situation in the first few episodes um i think it was episode it might be the pilot episode actually wilden is interrogating the girls and at one point he says to hannah you and allison look a bit similar was there some sort of jealousy there and when i was watching this when i was like 12 for some reason and i don't think the writers did this on purpose this was literally just me i would always get like the first season i would always get hannah and allison mixed up 
all the time. And I was reading through some kind of forums and Twitter posts and things like that. And similar people had similar experiences. Now, do I think the writers did this purposefully? No, but I think it's very interesting how this has happened to not just me. Um, I thought it was a me issue whenever I watch a TV show. Um, it takes me a while to put names to faces. I'm much more re uh, recognise faces compared to names. I'm like that in real life, to be honest. It's like me and my friends could be talking about our high school trauma uh, like six, seven years later. And they're like, oh, do you remember this person? I'm like, mm-mm. And they show me a picture and I'm like, well, yes, yes. I just remember faces. And um, I think it's very interesting from my point of view how I did get Alison and Hannah kind of mixed up. But whenever I rewatch and I watch this scene again with Wilden kind of pointing that out, um, I see where the writers were trying to go. And I really wish they continued that because after that, there were a few things throughout the rest of the show that kind of hinted at that kind of Hannah's trauma of maybe being similar to Alison and not wanting to and things like that, um, which I just wish they would have explored more. There's a reason that Wilden said that. And um, I know in Pretty Little Liars, there's the continuous thing of like, every blonde girl looks the same apparently. Um, but blonde hair was the staple of the show. That was one of the symbols of the show. I think uh, they could have used the coincidence that Hannah and Alison had the same hair colour maybe a bit more to explore kind of the identity crisis aspect within Hannah's life. Now, the Halloween twin situation to me um, continues to be a very interesting topic for me. The twin that met... Um, Ashley and like only Ashley could really see her and it was a bit of a ghost situation thing and originally um Alison tells this story to Hannah which is like the opening of the episode I guess. Now I'm not saying that Hannah and Alison could have been twins um I don't really like that personally but if they wanted to uh, the link was definitely there between only Ashley seeing this one ghost girl who we know killed her sister um, and had a twin. Maybe that is a foreshadowing to what if Hannah had actually killed Alison and uh, Hannah was like the twin or something like that, like the secret twin. Um, if they wanted to go down that route, there's definitely that link there. I find, I find that whole ghost thing so interesting because for me, it's like on a show like Pretty Little Liars where you have to be really careful with what you're showing because everything will end up linking together um, and you need to make sure it all makes sense. And just like any mystery show, to put Ashley in the main kind of frame to see this ghost girl and like no one else can see her and like she disappeared just like that I think is very interesting and I think if they wanted to go down the route of Hannah potentially being this twin um it could have been something they could have done I would not have liked it but the link is like there if that makes any sense I just find it very interesting how Ashley was like that one person to see her if I was a writer for the show I would have done that on purpose I don't know if they did do that on purpose um, but I feel like you would have had to pick the character wisely. Like, for example, if Jessica De Laurentiis was the one to see the ghost girl, or even, gosh, I don't know, like, Spencer's dad, or Veronica, or something like that, you could make that link between, like, twins existing within the family and it kind of being kept a secret. I think it's interesting, too, Hannah kind of almost took Alison's place kind of within the school. She didn't really take the same kind of... the same amount that Alison kind of had around the school, you know, the popular kid and the power she had over everybody. Um, Hannah didn't exactly take that, like, amount, but within the time that Alison went missing, Hannah obviously felt very much more free. I think it was a situation of maybe Hannah and Alison couldn't coexist in terms of Hannah couldn't be her full self without Alison gone and the minute Alison was gone it was like okay I can like you know be who I want to be. Um, so I think it's interesting that uh, Hannah essentially took 
Alison's place within the school, she kind of became the popular girl. And that's bringing me on to Mona. Now, we know Mona had a bit of an, an obsession with Alison. Um, it's not very hidden. We know this. And I think it's very interesting that Mona chose Hannah to kind of be her new friend. And I think um, looking on the outside, I think it's definitely Mona not really wanting Alison back, but wanting kind of the body of Alison or someone who she could try and morph into Alison. But now that she was friends with this person, it wouldn't be a thing of Alison bullying her. It would be a thing of like, making her own Alison type of thing. I think that's kind of how I see the early seasons. Once Mona gets revealed as A, I pretty much see that friendship as Mona wanting to kind of have her own Alison, but not the Alison that bullied her, the Alison that she makes in her mind type of thing. Um, so I think that's also a very interesting aspect to delve into because I don't think it's a coincidence that Hannah and Mona, two girls who were severely bullied by Alison for their appearance, kind of was like, right, now we're gonna be the popular girls, do you know what I mean? I think Mona definitely had a plan within that aspect of like, right, I want my own Alison De Laurentiis. Also kind of going back to earlier when I said that it felt like Hannah and Alison couldn't really coexist in the same kind of world with like both one of them had to be gone type of thing. It kind of links to the books with the whole Courtney and Alison situation. It didn't really feel like they could both coexist and be who they wanted to kind of B, if that makes sense, which is very interesting, uh, interesting way to look at things. And then we kind of have the whole identity crisis. A funeral director in season five kind of mentioned how Alison and Hannah kind of looked similar. And this kind of led eventually to Hannah's like whole identity crisis. And I really enjoyed this storyline. This is for me when they kind of focused on all of these things of Mona and Hannah being the popular girls. The thing that Wilden said at the start of the show, everything I've mentioned, this is when they kind of bring it together. But I feel like they don't explore it to the amount that they could have. For example, Hannah dyes her hair, uh, like bits of her hair, and she cuts her hair um, because she doesn't want to be like Alison. Love that, perfect, great. And then she becomes a bit of an alcoholic for two episodes. And that's exactly my issue. The trauma, that Hannah would have faced with Alison coming back, I think they kind of muted it. They wanted to show to us, oh yeah, Hannah's kind of, you know, going off the ropes a little bit, but they didn't really show it to the amount that I think they should have. Like I said, they turned her into a bit of an alcoholic. Okay, great, let's explore that more. Like, let's explore that with the trauma more. I'm not praising alcohol addiction, whatever, that's not what I'm doing, but I'm saying, great, they're delving into some trauma here. They're kind of letting us into Hannah's mind a little bit. We see her fall off the rails. We know that's not a good sign. Alison's coming back. This is like, this is really hard for Hannah. Okay. But when this lasts, like barely two episodes, that then I kind of have a problem. I think Alison coming back, I said this in my previous video about Alison, Alison coming back is a huge thing for the girls. Um, huge, huge things. But specifically for Emily and Hannah, I think they hold a bit more of that trauma compared to the other two. We're not having a competition here of whose trauma's worse, but if you want to play it, that, no, I'm joking. Anyway, um, Hannah's trauma from Alison came so much from her ED and her cutting her hair and dyeing her hair was a perfect thing for me to be like, okay, she's trying to push away from it. And I love that. But I just kind of wish we saw more of that, more of her rebelling, more of her kind of breaking out against kind of Alison more. She does, don't get me wrong, she does. But I don't really think we get a deep dive into her current mindset, which I would have loved so much more they explore it, they give it up. Um, and this happens a lot, like Spencer's addiction sto uh, storyline. It did kind of continue through the whole show, but when they really zoomed in on it, it kind of finished quite quickly. I wanna explore the mindset of these girls more. 
Um, but especially Emily and Hannah when Alison comes back because the trauma would have been utterly insane and I don't really, I fall for the fact that obviously she changed her appearance, great. But her turning to alcohol, okay, that's fine. If you want to go down that route, completely fine. But then to kind of cure it, I guess, or kind of get over it in a few episodes, I'm like, okay, I feel like we could do a little bit more here, guys, like a little bit more towards kind of exploring where she is, especially because this is the time as well, like her and Caleb aren't great and things like that. So I would have liked to see her just rebel a bit more and be a bit more, I guess, fall off the rails a bit more because it would be so justified for her to feel this way and for her to be rebelling because Alison brought her so much trauma and she had always kind of been, you look like Alison, do you know what I mean? That there has to be a tipping point and this was the tipping point, it was, but it just wasn't really explored in the detail. I think they could have done it. And I think cause it's such a sensitive topic too, Pretty Little Liars has a history of um, sense, not really dealing with sensitive topics as well as they should do. Um, and I think this was one of them completely. And this goes back to, for me, I've said this on multiple occasions, the Pretty Little Liars writers are so good at setting things up. They are so good at kind of creating, you know, that kind of like starting position and they drop hints and hints and it kind of leads to the actual thing. And the, the, the build up to something, they always do it so well. Like, I bash some of the writing because I love the show and I'm very passionate about the show uh, and things that we can change uh, to make it even better. But I will always give so much praise for the build up that the Pretty Little Liars writers do because it's so good. What are the examples? The whole Maya's death build up even the Alison reveal build up, like it's so good. Like the writing is so good, but then it comes to the final thing and just loose ends aren't tied up and things don't really make sense. It's kind of like, okay, what are we doing here? Do you know what I mean? Um, and I think this was a similar case of that in terms of they were dropping these kind of hints and throughout the show, we explored Hannah's issues within herself that were caused by Alison and her dad um but then it came to kind of like the tipping point when Alison came back and it just fell a bit short I think for me and it would have been nice to explore the trauma a bit more is what I'm trying to say Alison to me felt like a huge importance in Hannah's life like when Alison came back Hannah did not want Alison back she was not happy that Alison back and uh, Alison was back and I think everything after she came back really took a down downward spiral in terms of her friendships kind of fell apart a bit her and Caleb weren't you know as tight anymore um and those were obvious signs that she was going through something give me more of that give me more of that <laughs> I think they were trying to connect something with Alison and, Han Alison and Hannah, which is obviously the trauma that uh, Hannah faced from everything. But I just think we could have explored some more and we could have delved into Hannah's trauma a bit more. Um, I really enjoyed Hannah's whole time on the show, really. I think, actually, that's a lie. After the time jump, well, the time jump, guys, I don't really count the time jump in Pretty Little Lies. Like, I, whenever I'm rewatching the show, I stop after CC because I'm like, oh, I could not do the time jump. I'm so sorry. Because I felt like we lost a load of, like, who the characters actually are and things like that. So Hannah, after the time jump, I actually really disliked because I don't like where they went with her. And it's just like, mm -mm, do you know what I mean? But Hannah pre-time jump... Like, I loved her so much. I think a lot of her anger was so valid. I think the girls would often mistreat Hannah, maybe without intention, but I think they would. But I also enjoyed the storylines with, like, Ashley 
um and things like that and exploring more of that um but also her stuff with her dad um I don't have daddy issues thank goodness um my dad is my best friend I love him so much especially when I was young um I watched the show when I was 12 so I didn't really know life without a dad because I'm so in such a grateful position when I'm that young like I said I've not experienced life without a dad I don't know what it's like without a dad my dad is my best friend like I said so it gave me a real insight really early on in my life into other people's home situations and home lives um but also growing up um we were we were quite poor <laughs> we were not well off as a family it's not funny at the end of the day it's not funny but it is we you know we were in a position as a family we didn't have spare money it was like you get paid on minimum wage um you pay the bills and you figure out how you're gonna survive that whole month. It was rough growing up for me. Um, we just didn't have money. Uh, we were we were we were not great. But like I've kind of seen it all. Do you know what I mean? Like I've I've lived through like that life, and um, so therefore seeing Ashley's situation and Hannah's situation, where they were also living through similar things that I was living through at that age was really really nice for me because not nice in the situations that we were in but nice that like I could see it so I really liked Hannah's storylines because of that um so I don't know I just wish we could have done more with Hannah's character and Hannah's overall trauma truly when Alison came back where her head was at do you know what i mean so that is it for this video i would love to hear your opinions down below make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys